Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and you've probably heard by now that I'm kinda sick. You've probably also heard that Elon Musk spent his weekend, well, you know, testing a new rocket engine. While we were watching that terrible Super Bowl, SpaceX were testing this 200 ton thrust engine, which by my math must burn about half a ton of fuel per second, which means that it probably burned more fuel than that Super Bowl halftime show, and also sounded a lot better. And the truth is that by now everybody else has put their analysis out there and I don't have anything new. I did get asked about the green tinge on this frame here and when I recorded this I said it was probably either a camera defect or copper vaporizing and then I woke up this morning and Elon Musk confirmed that it was indeed copper vaporizing. He also reported performances of 172 metric tons, which is still short of the 200 tons that they talked about, although they're not using densified propellants, and the higher density propellants when they're subcooled means that they could get an extra 10 to 20% perform, 20 performance. I also hear from people on the ground that they're up to about half a dozen tests now, and just over 6 seconds burn time. Anyway, returning to the original subject of the video, the green flash is seen on the, the Merlin engine because the startup system uses triethyl borane to ignite it. Triethyl borane uh, will basically combust on contact with oxygen, so it's great for starting rocket engines. But the Raptor uses full electronic ignition, so the green wasn't from that. But in all the conversations about this, I can link this image of a rocket with what looks like a green rocket exhaust and you know I immediately started to ask you what is this this is really odd to a casual inspection it looks like a proper engine that's based on some sort of boring fuel you see the well developed Mach diamonds there showing that the engines are actually developing serious power it's not just like a start and we know that in the 60s, the US was interested in boranes as a high energy density fuel. One of the ideas was that they would have special zip fuel available to their bombers that would, they would switch over to when they got close to the target so they could get that extra boost of speed. And they looked at it uh, for rocket engines. I think pentaborane was the leading contender. And the way, the place I heard most about this was, of course, Richard D. Clarke's Ignition, which has a whole section devoted to exotics, which probably includes things like boranes. Again, if you want to learn a little bit of rocket fuel chemistry and have some laughs, this is a classic book. But anyway, coming back to the image, it wasn't really right for a 1960s test. And I'll tell you why. First of all, if you look, there's four engines on that, and I couldn't think of any ICBM that had four engines on it like that. Also, it has two extra, like, looks like boosters strapped on the side that aren't even firing, and that looks like a scale model of some sort of launch tower. Oh yeah, and the vehicle is actually attached by cables rather than, say, strapped to a test stand. So this isn't an engine test. After a bit of investigation and asking the hive mind, also known as my followers on Twitter, we figured out that this is actually a sound test for the SLS. So the test rig is a 5% scale model of the SLS at Marshall Space Flight Center. The engines obviously aren't RS-25, they're like custom engines that are designed for, um, you know, kerosene, liquid oxygen. They are obviously lit using the triethyl borane, but they keep that stuff flowing through the engine for a good couple of seconds long enough that we get to see that nice picture. Now, they also did test with the solid rocket boosters attached to the side. This thing in total generated something like 12 tons of thrust, which actually makes it comparable to the small sat launch vehicle that Vector Space Systems is hoping to test in the next couple of months. I also find it interesting that in these days of high performance computing able to model things, sometimes building a model is the way to go, and this was of course true with the space shuttle. They did exactly the same kind of tests on pretty much the same rig using the same engines. The space shuttle was of course the launch vehicle for which the acoustics became very important because the orbiter sat so close to the launch pad that sound waves could actually damage it in theory and that's why they had to control the noise by installing the sound suppression system or the water deluge system. And to be honest, when I discovered that nobody had actually built a full-scale engine running off borane-based fuel, I was actually relieved because boranes are really toxic and any buddy trying to use them to launch rockets was probably going to be poisoning their ground crew and any wildlife nearby. 
So yes, that's what the green flames are all about. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.